In this video, I want to show how I converted a window AC unit, even the one with the little electronic controls on the front, to run all the time so that you can control it with an aftermarket device to be able to bring the temperatures down lower than what the original controller could do. Mine had a minimum temperature of I think 65 degrees and I was building a chiller where I wanted to get my glycol down below freezing, below 32 Fahrenheit. So this is what I did to bypass the control board altogether, uh, make everything relatively safe, and then what unit I used to control that temperature um, to bring that down to below freezing. I wanted to show you guys the electronic circuit on this little um, air conditioner. So you can see the little control panel here, right? So I've taken it apart and you can see the back. And if you want to configure one of these to run all the time so that you can then use a separate temperature controller, excuse me while I grab it, something like this. Um, and then this allows you to set the temperature that you want down into the freezing range rather than being limited down to, you know, 60 degrees or whatever that this control panel does. So the big issue here is what do you connect to where to get it to work and get it to work safely, right? Um, and, and it's said that the electronic control panels are harder because you can't just um, wire them on. And this, it's, it's really not that much different. So the, the, some of the basic components for this, you've got the, um, the capacitor here, the fan and the compressor run through this capacitor. You got a little transformer down here it looks like all this transformer does is drop the voltage in order for the control panel to work. So that's that's a little irrelevant. You got wires here for the control panel. Um, so important stuff, right? You've got white coming in from our main power cord, right? So our main power cord comes in right here. You've got your white, which is your neutral. You've got your black, which is your hot. And you've got your green, which is your ground. Now, your white is going into the circuit board here. Your black is going into this black box, which would be a relay. And your green is just um, screwed down to the case here. There's actually a wiring diagram on this guy. I, I can't remember where it's at, but I'll go ahead and walk through this with you guys. You got your wires back here. So you've got a set of wires coming from the compressor and a set of wires coming from the fan. So the same fan motor runs the condenser fan that blows the hot air outside and the evaporator fan that blows the cold air inside. It's the same fan motor and we've just taken off the fan blades for the inside fan. From the fan, you've got five wires and you're like, oh my goodness, why are there five wires? Well, this guy has three speeds on his fan. So we've got, hold on here, let me find it. So we've got two wires going to the compressor, that brown and that pink. Then you've got three wires, um, the uh, black, blue, and yellow are all coming down to the circuit board. You're like, okay, so those are controlled from the circuit board. If you look at the wiring diagram, this is a three-speed fan. So all I did is look to see which wire was the high speed. And that was the black one. It's like, okay, well, I need to be able to control that individually because I just want it to run at high speed. So I'm just going to pull the black wire and I will use that later. I don't need the other two because those are for the other two speeds. So, okay, the next thing is for the compressor. The compressor has two wires running to the capacitor and it has one wire, uh, this red one here, that runs to this relay. Okay, good. So this relay turns on the hot line and it'll run up to the compressor and then it must run the, from the compressor back to the capacitor in order to also power the fan. Um, and then you've got this blue, so this, this also this line wire, right? This line wire goes into the circuit board. The blue wire that comes out goes over to the capacitor. So if I'm gonna, I think that's, that's just always connected, right? You can actually see that there's just a, a plate of metal here that the two are connected to. So if you're okay with leaving the circuit board in and just bypassing it, that's fine. You can just leave that there. If you want to actually take the circuit board out, which is what I'm about to do, then we'll need to connect those two wires together so that that uh, capacitor is always hot, or at least always has the, the line voltage. 
All right, so we've got our what needs to be hot for our fan. We've got here what needs to be hot for our compressor. As soon as I can get it off, let me get my pliers here. Um, keep in mind too that these capacitors can hold charge, you know, by design. They hold charge even when everything's unplugged. So be careful when you're in here messing around that you don't shock yourself. All right, so we've got that, and then we're also going to need our hotline. All right, so these are the two things that we need to power with our hot, and this is our hotline. So if we want to just start testing some things, we can connect these up. And really we should go ahead and um, connect these to correct terminals, crimp them together or whatever um, for the permanent install. But for now, I need to get this protective covering off. And get access to that guy. And I'll pop that one on right there. All right, so now we've got a very dangerous connector here, but now our hot from our power cord runs straight to compressor, compressor and straight to our fan. The line is running straight to the capacitor because this is a, a hard connection here on the circuit board, which means if we plug this in right now, everything will turn on. I say everything, the compressor and the fan. I mean, there's really not that much to it, right? Now, the problem here is it will just run indefinitely, and that's why you do need to make sure that you've got something that will turn the compressor and fan on and off as needed, which is where a little controller like this comes in. I've, I've got this in my description below. Um, I think this is like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon, and this will actually do both. It'll do cooling or heating. Uh, I just went ahead and bought them with the cooling and the heating. I thought I might need it in the future because this is kind of proof of concept level stuff anyway, so it'd be fun. You got your little... Um, temperature gauge that runs off of it so I'll drop that in the water that I'm chilling and I can set this down to like you know at 22 degrees Fahrenheit or something and that'll give me nice cold water and then that will enable me to cycle the compressor off and on and not just freeze everything up all right so let's go ahead and test this real quick and make sure it works and then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and completely bypass the circuit board so that I can remove it all together and just have my capacitor and then have this terminal and have this terminal down here and that's it and I can remove this whole guy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and then I will flip the switch on the power strip and see if it works as expected. All right, here we go. And there we have it. We have the compressor and we have the condenser fan. Go ahead and unplug that. All right, so the second part here is gonna be pulling this out all together. So I need to disconnect this little uh, transformer here because I don't need that. And then I'm gonna disconnect my neutral line here. And I shouldn't have to connect these two neutrals together, this blue and this white. I might be able to run this white wire all the way straight up to the capacitor and plug it in. So let's see if that'll work. Go ahead and get this disconnected just so I can get rid of the board. All right, and then these two guys are just gonna need to be protected. I'm not sure if there's any voltage that ever comes across these um, from the motor itself. But we'll go ahead and remove that. And here it is. And then this is the, uh, I didn't mention this before, this is the temperature sensor. This ran onto, this was connected right next to the evaporator so it could see, I'm sorry, on the intake side of the evaporator, right? So it could see what the temperature of the room was as it was bringing in air. So get rid of that. <clears throat> so I need to now see. Too many wires here. Too many wires. How is this transformer? Is this transformer just like hanging here? Oh, it is just hanging here. Let's see. There we go, I can get rid of a transformer. Now I got a little transformer, what is this? 
Um, I don't even know if any of those markings mean anything. It's just a little, I'm sure it just goes down to like 12 volts AC or something. Um, all right, so we've still got our ground wire connected, so that's good. So the question is, can we connect this where this blue wire is currently connected? I think that we've got enough length. Let's see. And remember, this is where you don't want to be touching too many things on this capacitor. You can shock yourself. You want to be careful here because you're messing with, here in the US, a small AC unit is 110 volts. And that's the wiring you know, coming into this control unit. And those are the wires that you're going to be moving over straight to the compressor and to the fan motor. This is dangerous voltage. Um, in addition to that, you're going through a capacitor. Capacitors will hold charge even when the unit is off, unplugged from the wall. Uh, one way to let it charge is or discharge is these will discharge slowly on their own, but I don't know how long it takes for them to discharge. It could be a month that you have to leave it for it to discharge. Um, I'm going to let you go do your research on capacitors and messing with these. Um, if you want to go figure out how to discharge them manually and safely before you start working on it, this is, this is not supposed to be um, teaching you exactly how to be safe in this project. I'm showing you how I did it and you need to make sure that you're safe before you do it yourself. All right, so got that blue wire off. I just run this white wire straight onto here. There we go. All right, then I'll probably, these are mostly protected because they've got these little blue caps on them, but I'll probably just go ahead and black tape those up real good just to make sure that they don't touch anything. And then I need to get, what I think I'm gonna do is go find a crimp of some sort so I'll cut all these wires off, strip them, and then uh, crimp them all together. I don't think a wire nut would be appropriate because they have the stranded wire in there. So let me go find a crimp real quick and we will have this down to minimal pieces. First step, I'm going to snip these wires. And then we need to strip them. And this, my friends, is absolutely one of the coolest tools ever. Um, <laughs> I would always use these for stripping, right? Um, they're handy, right? They're on my person, they're available, they do work for stripping, they've got the little stripper um, here in the, the, the plier pieces. But these, and they weren't that expensive, um, you've got the, the cutters here, right? And it'll strip anywhere from, what, eight to 18 gauge wire. and it has the coolest action ever. So if we throw this, looks like 10 gauge. That is just the neatest thing in the world to me. And it's so quick. There, oh, that's a smaller wire. Um, and there are definitely times where I don't wanna go grab my electrical kit, and sometimes I just use my Leatherman still. But if I've got it available, if I've got multiple wires to do, this thing is my go-to. And this was a, an Amazon special, of course. I highly recommend it. I'll have a link for it down below. Now, we will see what size crimp we need. This guy. So these two are slightly smaller and of a different wire type too. At least the incoming one is copper. At least it appears to be copper. It might be copper coated, who knows. Um, let's see if the blue would fit. Definitely fits. How about the red? Because you know, you always want to choose the smallest one that'll fit to get the best crimp, right? That appears to fit as well. Let's see if it fits on here. Let's try something a little different. What if we did... When you're choosing these spade connectors, you've got the male and the female end. So usually the female end has a protective insulating coating on the outside. 
so that it's always protected and then when the male end plugs into it you'll see that both are protected. Now you might think oh well, once they're plugged in they're both insulated so it's fine it doesn't matter which way you put it on but really what you want is that female end to be on the source so that's the side with the power cord coming in that way if for whatever reason things were disconnected inside of this unit and you turn the power on you don't have an exposed 110 volts sitting there. At least it's got that semi-protective plastic around it. So if it's bouncing around in the case, it doesn't spark on something. Anyway, that's the idea. So that's why I chose to put the female end on the power cord end. Okay, that seemed to work. And it's probably better to have a connector on here anyway. I think I'll go ahead and tape that up just so that it's all covered. And then I'll tape those up as well. And we'll have it. So let's go ahead and test this as soon as I get those taped up. Well, there we have it. All we've got now is the start and run capacitor and a couple taped up connections that had been properly crimped. So let's, let's power it on again. We are plugged in and here we go. You can see it's starting to frost up right there. That wraps up my video on making my AC unit run all the time and then me hooking my aftermarket controller up to it to control when it runs based on its own temperature sensor. Appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It helps people know that this was a valuable video. Check out some of my other videos and you have a wonderful day.